Namaste. All right, we're ready for round two of today's class. So if you are watching this live, you will have just seen a rain delay to class. I was up on the rooftop of the Leaf Hotel and had beautiful views out across Ho Chi Minh City, but a massive torrential rainstorm has blown in. And so we are, we have moved, I have moved into our hotel room Jane has moved beside me so that she can practice yoga. She was practicing yoga in the room while I was up on the roof, but now there are two of us in our small room doing yoga. So uh, this will be fun. Um, cool. Well, all right. Take two. Namaste. Welcome to this week's Adventure Yoga Weekly Tune-Up. Um, I am in Ho Chi Minh City one more time for the year. This is our last day in Ho Chi Minh City before Jane and I go off and uh, explore different parts of the world for a little bit. I've got all my workshops coming up in Hanoi and then around Europe in the next few weeks. So Jane's gonna go explore Cambodia and Laos for a little bit while I come visit some of you. And uh, to get me ready for our last night in the city, which might not involve a lot of like going out and seeing anything if the weather doesn't improve, but the idea of this class was to wake me up so that I could be really wide awake and ready for hanging out with Jane tonight and having dinner and feeling like I hadn't just sat around and worked for the last couple of days, which is really what we've been doing here. Um, just a little alert from Facebook there on the screen. All right, so we've got about 28 minutes on my timer for class today. So we're gonna keep it short, just get a little bit active, get a little bit flowy, get a little bit core work, get a little bit, maybe some back bendy, and then get out of here. All right? Sound good? Thanks for coming. Hope it sounds good, because that's what we're doing. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Take a comfortable seat. Sit up tall. And close your eyes. I've got an absolutely beautiful sound around me here, I can still hear the rain falling outside our room. I tend to appreciate that more when I'm inside and can hear outside than when I'm, say, outside trying to get to a yoga class and it's pouring rain. Whatever sounds you can hear, listen to them. I find this is a great way to slow down. Just change your focus. Listen. Bring your hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. Let's sing one ohm together. Exhale. Inhale. Oh. Bow your chin. Lower your hands. Lift your chin. Open your eyes. Come into Uttanasana with your knees bent. Just come into a standing forward fold. Have your feet a little bit wider than you would normally have them. So a little bit wider than hip distance apart. This gives you a little more freedom to hinge at your pelvis, to flex at your hip. Touch the ground with all of your fingertips. Have your wrists underneath your shoulders. Bend your knees. Relax your head and your chest and fold. Uttanasana. I've been doing a lot of sitting. There's a really amazing internet here at the hotel, and if we've been taking advantage of that and getting any work we need done that involves research online, which is pretty much everything, of course. So we've been sitting a lot, which means that my hamstrings haven't been really that active. 
bending your knees just gives you a chance to release them, but also start working them without having them just grip and hang on, which happens if you do like the fold forward fold and don't touch the ground. Instead, keep folding forward, lift up to the very bottom of your spine, lift your tailbone a little. You might straighten your legs some, and that's cool. I'm really working to get just a little more lengthening for your hamstrings, a little more active lengthening in your hamstrings. Push down through your feet. Very slightly lift up through your tailbone, to the very bottom of your spine. Bend your knees a little more. Straighten your arms. Come to Ardha Uttanasana. We're going to stay here for a few breaths. So straighten your arms. Lift your chest. Stretch your spine. So often in Ardha Uttanasana, I'll see students looking forward, like really straining the back of your neck. Instead, lengthen through your neck on all sides evenly so that you're looking straight down. Stretch the top of your head forward move your shoulders away from your ears. Breathe. Push down through your feet. Bend your elbows and fold forward. Uttanasana. Lift through your tailbone. Straighten your arms. Lift your chest. Stretch your spine. Stretch back through your tailbone. Stretch forward through the top of your head. Look down. Fold forward. Uttanasana. Ardha Uttanasana. Push through your arms, straighten your arms, fold forward, Uttanasana. Push down through your feet, Ardha Uttanasana. Push down through your feet, Uttanasana. Place your hands on your hips, lift up through your elbows, stand up. Stretch your arms down at your sides, Tanasana. Bring your feet to about hip distance apart. Make your feet parallel to each other. Stretch your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Remember that work, Ardha Uttanasana. Touch your fingertips to the ground, straighten your arms, lift your chest. Step back to plank pose, Palakasana. Push down through your hands, push down through your feet, draw your belly. Push down through your hands, push down through your feet, Draw your belly. Bend your elbows. Chaturanga Dandasana. Up dog. Place your feet flat. This is nicer than on the slate rooftop of the hotel. These tiles are really smooth and flat. Ooh, it feels so good. Down dog. Hack your toes. Lift your hips up and back. Bend your knees, exhale, look forward and float or walk. Ardha Uttanasana, under your fingertips, straighten your arms, lift your chest. Uttanasana, fold forward. Urdhva Hasasana, reach up, stand up. Tadasana. Push down through your feet. Squeeze your feet towards each other. Straighten your arms. Stretch up, Urdhva Hasasana. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Push down through your feet. Hug your lower legs in, Ardha Uttanasana. Step back to plank pose, push down through your feet, push down through your hands. Hug your lower legs in, draw your belly in. Bend your elbows, Chaturanga Dandasana. Push down through your feet, squeeze your lower legs in, and come up, up dog. Down dog. Exhale fully. Bend your knees, look forward and float or walk to the top. Ardha Uttanasana. Uttanasana. Urdhva Hasasana. Tadasana. Push down through your feet, stretch your arms up. Urdhva Hasasana. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Speed your breath up with the movement. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plank pose. Stay here. Push down through your hands and feet. Draw your belly in. Inhale. Chaturanga Dandasana, exhale. 
Up dog. Inhale. Down dog. Exhale. Three breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees. Look forward and float or walk. Inhale. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale. Uttanasana. Urdhva Hastasana. Inhale. Tadasana. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Think your way to Chaturanga Nasana. Exhale. Inhale. Up dog. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees. Look forward. Inhale. Ardha Uttanasana. Uttanasana. Urdhva Hastasana. Tadasana. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees. Look forward. Make your way forward. Ardha Uttanasana. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Stand up. Inhale. Tadasana. Exhale. Stretch out. Urdhva Hastasana. Fold forward. Uttanasana. Step back to down dog. This is about where we got on round one. Just a little bit further. Lift your right leg up. We got to here as well. Push through your right arm and stretch up through your right leg. Then open your right hip up. Lift up through your right underarm. Bend your right leg and point your toes. Lift your right knee up. Stretch through your whole right side. Push through your right hand. Lift up through your right knee. Then come back to center. Square your hips. Straighten your right leg. Push your chest back evenly. Shift forward like plank. Bend your right knee and bring your knee to your nose. Bring your nose to your knee. Push through your hands. Push through the toes on your left foot. Work to keep your hips square. Lift your right leg up and back. And do one leg down dog. Then shift forward like plank, knee to nose. Push through your hands, push through your left toes. Lift your right leg up and back. Square your hips. Shift forward, knee to nose. Bring your knee outside your right arm. Look forward. Bring your knee outside your left arm. Look forward. Bring your knee to your nose. Look down. Lift your right leg up and back. Bring your right leg down. Down dog. Lift your left leg up. Push through your left hand and stretch through your left side. Lift up through your left leg, then lift through your left hip. Watch out for the TV. Bend your knee. Point your toes. Lift your left knee up. Push through your left hand and really stretch through your left side. Lift through your left underarm. Lift through your left knee. Keep breathing. Don't kick the TV off the wall when you square your hips and straighten your leg. Maybe that just applies to me, but if it doesn't, good advice. One leg down dog. Square your hips. Push your chest back evenly. Shift forward like plank. Bring your left knee to your nose. Round in your back. Bring your nose to your knee. Push through your hands. Push through your right toes. Draw your belly in. Lift your left leg up. Keep your hips square. Hug your thighs in. Shift forward. Knee to nose. Lift it up and back. Square your hips. Draw your left hip down. Lift your right hip up. Knee to nose. Shift forward. Lift it up and back. Knee to nose. Bring it to outside your left arm. Look forward. Bring it outside your right arm. Look forward. Bring your knee to nose. 
Lift your left leg up and back. Shift forward, knee to nose. I don't think we did this twice in the first set. Nope. Ah, outside your left arm, outside your right arm. I was just feeling it more this time. Back to center, lift it up and back. Bring your left leg down. Bend your knees, exhale. Look at your hands. Look beyond your hands. I want you to do your best to jump through. So you've got to really lift your hips to float through and bring your legs out in front of you. Sit down, stretch your legs out. Do your best. We'll get to work on those next in the next few weeks of workshop. So come to those. Wiggle your hips back. Place your hands beside your hips. Dandasan, sit up tall, spread your toes. Bend your knees, hold the fronts of your shins, and sit up tall. Draw your lower back in, move your pubic bone or your belly button down towards the ground. Stretch up tall through all sides of your neck. Stretch your arms out. Lean back a little, lift your heels. I find this entry so challenging into Navasana. It really forces me to work to stay on my sit bones, which I've just rolled off, to come into the pose. Draw your lower back in. You can keep shins parallel to the ground. Hold the back to your legs. We'll call that stage one. Stage two, stretch your arms out. Stage three. Lift your feet, but if I do that, I've got to turn or else you don't see my face. You just see the soles of my feet. And to any of my Thai students, that would be really rude. So let's not do that. Stretch your spine long. Move your shoulders down. Draw your belly in. Lower halfway. Watch out for the wall behind you. Ardha Navasana. Draw your belly in. Stretch your spine. Navasana. Ardha Navasana. Navasana. Bend your knees. Roll onto your right hip, move your arms to the left. Pedal your arms and legs. Change it up, because Navasana can be like a little static. Right? That can be a little boring. So now, lower halfway here. Yeah. Switch sides. Oh, stay low. And then come up. Switch sides. Switch sides. Just go low. When we go low, they go high, come up, high. Switch sides. Go low. And lie down. <sighs> Glad I'm not on the rooftop now. That floor was a little, you know, like a rooftop bar floor. <laughs> it's nice to be on my room. Beautiful tile floor. Probably can't even see me anymore on the camera. So we better do something else. Interlace your hands behind your head. Lift your head and look at your feet. Push down through your shoulders. Push down through your hips. Squeeze your legs together and lift your legs up. Draw your belly in. Lower your legs halfway. Slow your breath down. Lower your legs halfway. Draw your belly in. Lower your legs halfway. Hover. Draw your belly in. Lift your legs halfway. Lower your legs halfway. Turn your feet to the right. Lift your legs halfway. Lower. Turn your feet to the left. Lift your legs halfway. Oh yeah. Lower, hover, turn your feet back to center, turn your feet to the right, lift your feet halfway. I know we're almost done, trust me, I can feel it. Lower, turn your feet to the left, lift up halfway, draw your belly in, lower your feet, bring your feet back to center, and collapse. Bring your head down. First take some shorter breaths, then take some longer breaths. Slow your breath down. Now 
why do we even do that? Well, why, for a few reasons. I'm so glad that my brain asked that out loud. One of the reasons is so that we can have more stability in our torso while we're standing, have more stability in our torso while we're doing things like standing poses or even doing back bends that involve a foot on the ground, but also so that we can bring our feet off the ground. Come into plank pose. I apologize to Jane and Stephen's forearms in advance for this. Come to your forearms. Have your elbows roughly where your hands were. You will probably want to slide your toes back a little bit so your butt's not sticking up, but you're going still for that plank shape in your body. Walk your feet in. Look back at your feet. Push forward with your hands so that you can lift through your underarms, lift through the sides of your ribs, and push your chest back more. Walk your feet in. Walk your feet back out to plank. Draw your belly in. Then come to real plank. You can jump your hands into plank, which is really fancy, or you can do what normal people do, just one hand at a time. Under your right hand and outer edge of your right foot. Pashi Stasana Prat. Stack your feet. Start your top arm up. Look up. Squeeze your legs towards each other. This is it. This is what we're doing. Push through your right hand. Lift your hips a little bit. Squeeze your legs towards each other. Lift through the outer edge of your left foot. So it's probably reaching away from your hands towards the ground. Instead, pull the outer edge of your left foot up towards your left hand. So you squeeze your legs together more. Down dog. Change sides. Change my angle a bit so you can see maybe a little bit more. Come to your left hand, and right to your left foot. Stack your feet. Stretch your right arm up and look up. Push through your left hand and lift your hips a little. Push through your left foot. And then think about your right foot. Think about the top foot. Instead of your right foot reaching down towards the ground, make it a little more active. Pull the outer edge of your right foot up towards your right underarm up towards your right hand, and squeeze your legs together more. This leg stability, this leg strength is really key to this pose. It's really key to inverting, especially headstands and handstands. Downward facing dog. Think about how active your legs are when you're doing that work in Vashistasana, inside plank. Then lift your right leg up. Even though your legs are split, don't let them like forget each other. Keep them really active. Keep them drawing in towards each other, even though one leg is lifted. Then bring your right leg down, lift your left leg up. Same thing as in Vajisasana, even though your legs are split here. Keep them really active. Keep the outer edge of your lifted leg, your left leg, really fired up. Keep your inner thighs hugging in. Bring your left leg down. Bring your knees down. Sit on your heels and sit up. Jane's really good. She was already there. She knew. She was just waiting for me. Okay. Big grand finale for today is we're going to do a little bit of headstand work. Because all this core work, all this focus work of activating us is really, I find it really fun to, to like fire you up and help you get upside down. You can use the wall if you like for stability. You can always go to the corner of the room so that either shoulder touches a corner. This room like always go to the corner of the room. And yes, Jane, it is dependent on there being a relevant corner for you to use. It's got a lot of curves in here, as you might be able to tell from this video. So not a lot of corners that are useful. Wow. So there's some lightning. You might have just heard that. That would have been thunder. OK. That would have been thunder, Jane says. I'm no scientist. Just play one on TV. I'm not turning my back to you to be rude. I'm turning my back to you so you can hear me when I'm doing headstand with you. Interlace your fingers in front of you. Have your elbows about shoulder distance apart. Just like forearm plank, you're going to place your forearms on the ground 
And have your elbows underneath your shoulders. So come over to your forearms. Place your forearms on the ground. Have your elbows over your shoulder. Sorry, under your shoulders. <laughs> Tuck your toes. Straighten your legs. Walk your feet in. So we did this already, right? We called it forearm plank and then we walked in. This time you've got your hands interlaced. Walk in a little further. Shift your shoulders forward so that you can bring your head to the ground so that it touches your, the heels of your hands. Keep your hands strong. Walk your feet in more. Squeeze your legs towards each other like you're doing Vachi Stasma here. Really squeeze your legs in. Then lift your right leg up. Squeeze your legs in. Square your hips. And lift up through your right leg. But don't forget your left leg. Keep your left leg and your right leg really working in together. Bring your right leg down. Lift your left leg up. Work to keep hugging your legs towards each other. Make them really like they're like magnets drawing towards each other, even though your left leg and right leg are totally split now. Switch sides. Bring your left leg down, right leg up. Keep them hugging in. Square your hips, then bend your left knee. With your left knee bent, roll up to your tiptoes on your left foot and lift your right leg up higher. You might find your left leg gets super light and you can bring your left leg up. Keep hugging your legs in wherever you are. If your left toes are still on the ground, bring your right leg down. Bring your left leg up. Bend your right knee. Roll to your tiptoes on your right foot. And then you might find your right leg gets lighter and you can bring it up to meet your left. Or else you're still up in headstand and you're working here. Squeeze your legs towards each other. If you're up in headstand, hug them in, physically touch it. If you've got one leg up, the other leg down, good. Squeeze your thighs towards each other. Straighten your lifted leg. Bring your lifted leg down. Both legs are up, bring them down. Walk your feet out. Come to child's pose. So keep your head below your heart as you transition from being inverted. Couple breaths in child's pose. And then sit up. Cool. My timer is warning me. We've only got a few minutes left if I'm gonna meet my deadline and I would like to keep us on track today. So let's do a couple bridge poses to cleanse our spine out, to stretch out even more from that upright position. Lie down. Bend your knees, place your feet on the ground. Just pause here for a minute. Set yourself up for bridge pose. Bring your feet hip distance apart, parallel to each other, near your hips. Place your right hand on your belly, left hand on your heart. Touch your knees together. Just take a moment after being upside down, doing your work to headstand. Slow your breath down. If we go into the back bend too quickly, we can forget that it happened. We've just got so much excitement happening, so much nervous energy moving through our body after the inversion work. So it's nice to slow down and take a moment so that we can really appreciate the back bend, not just have it be something we throw in at the end. Separate your knees so they're as wide as your ankles. Then hug your elbows in at your sides and bend your elbows. Point your fingers up to the sky. Robot arms. Push your shoulders down, push your elbows down, push your feet down. Lift your hips up. Underneath you, interlace your fingers. Tuck your shoulders in. Push your shoulders down, push your hands down, push your feet down. Then remember that work of keeping our legs drawing towards each other. And Squeeze your lower legs towards each other. Lift your outer hips up. Satubanda Sarvangasana. Bridge pose. Push down with your feet. 
Squeeze your lower legs in, lift your outer hips up. Release your hands, lower your hips. Bridge pose again, feet parallel, hip distance apart, near your hips, bend your elbows, robot arms. Push your shoulders down, elbows down, feet down, lift your hips up, lift your hips high, and then interlace your hands underneath you, tuck your shoulders in, push your wrists down, push your shoulders down, push your feet down. Without moving your hands and feet, pull your hands towards your feet, Pull your feet towards your hands, lift your hips higher, and push down through your shoulders so that you can lift your breastbone higher. Bring your whole back into this back bend. Release your hands and lower your hips. Straighten your left leg. Bring your right knee into your chest. Wrap your arms around your shin. Then hold your right knee with your left hand. Place your right hand on the ground. Look over your right shoulder. Parivritta Sukta Padigustasana. Roll onto your left hip. Bring your right knee across your body. Push your right shoulder down. If you've rolled so much, your right shoulders come off the ground. Undo your twist a bit. Reconnect your right shoulder to the ground and then come back to the twist without lifting your right shoulder. Straighten your bottom leg, your left leg. Come back to center and change sides. Stretch your right leg up, bend your left leg, pull your knee into your chest, hold your shin. And then take the twist. Hold your left knee with your right hand. Place your left hand on the ground. Look over your left shoulder. Roll to your right. Parivritta Sukta Padigustasana. Keep your left shoulder on the ground. But again, just undo the twist a little if you need to reconnect your left shoulder. Pull your left hip towards your right foot to create just a little more space in your back. Come back to center and bring both knees into your chest. Hold the fronts of your knees and rock from side to side on your sacrum. I like to move one knee away at a time and kind of pedal my knees with my hands slightly. Bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Lift your head and shoulders if it feels comfortable. And settle into Shavasana. Stretch your legs out. Relax your feet. Turn your palms up. Relax your hands. Over a couple of rounds of breath, let go of your breath.
your life. Wake your skin back up. Wake your body, your mind back up. For this world, for this life, stretch, open up. Bend your knees. Roll to your right. And sit up. Bring your hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. With your eyes closed, sit up tall. two days I've been doing a lot of looking at my computer screen and making notes and notebooks and not a lot of looking around the world it can take me inside take me a little bit down but it's been overcast here and it's, it makes it nicer because it's cooler but it also makes it a little more oppressive so for me this kind of practice, just getting onto the mat, getting active for 20 minutes, half an hour, makes a huge difference to my endorphins, to my just feeling of awakeness. So I hope this class has helped you feel a little bit more alive, a little bit more awake, and helps you enjoy your day a little bit more. Next week, we'll be in Helsinki. Uh, it's gonna be cold. Come, with, come take class with me, stay warm, heat up, see what's on deck. Thanks for practicing. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. This is where I would normally give you a little tour. There's not much to see in here. It's our hotel room. Jane has done a whole hotel room tour, though, so you can find that on the My Five Acres page. Do you do other rooms in that tour? I haven't watched it yet. Uh, I did a different room, but it's similar to this ah, room. So you get to see a different room from our room. Look, there's Jane. Oh, where's Jane? It's so Hi. hard to use this. <laughs> um, yeah, this is our room here at Leaf Hotel to see if there's anything to see out our beautiful window. This huge, like it curves all the way around this window. It's pretty spectacular. Um, and it looks out over just this little neighborhood of the city, which you really can't see here because it's nighttime, so all you're seeing is the reflection of what's in here. Will you turn the lights out, Jane? Sure. Jane's going to turn the lights out. We still probably won't be able to see much, but just thought while we've got here, we'll. Ooh, there it is. Look, there is our view out the hotel room. It's a residential neighborhood of Ho Chi Minh City, so it's just lots of little houses around. Where we are, not too many high rises. There are some going up nearby, though. All right, thanks, Jane. Sure. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed class. If you've got questions, comments, please put them in the in the comment section below, and I'll see you next week from Helsinki, or in Helsinki if you join me. Namaste.